Section 7 of Chapter 17 is about the dependence of free energy on pressure, although we could also say the dependence of free energy on concentration as well. So far, when we have been calculating the free energy change, it has been the standard free energy change at 25 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. However, we do have an equation for calculating the free energy change under any set of conditions, and that equation is given here. Q, right here, is the reaction quotient, the same Q that we have been working with. We can use pressures or concentrations, and remember those are not equilibrium values that go in there. Remember Q is calculated the same way that we calculate K, the equilibrium constant, and we do not include solids or liquids. The temperature must be in Kelvin, and the gas constant R we are going to want to have in joules since this is a free energy equation. That number we have been using is 8.314. So then that just leaves the standard free energy change, which we can calculate using the standard free energies of formation in Appendix 4. So let's do an example where we calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction at 25 degrees Celsius, where we have carbon monoxide at 5 atmospheres and hydrogen at 3 atmospheres. Notice how these are pressures and the units are atmospheres. That's what we would like to see. If we were going to use concentrations in this, we would like to see molarities. So let's calculate first the standard uh, free energy change we would need to use values in Appendix 4 for each of the substances. We get a value of negative 29 kilojoules, and I'm going to put that into joules since the R value is in joules. I could also convert the R value to kilojoules instead. So that will go in right here. Now let's calculate Q. I'm not going to include liquids in my Q, so I'm just going to put 1 for my numerator, and then for my denominator, I'm going to substitute in my pressures, 5 for the carbon monoxide, and then 3 for the hydrogen, and that 3 would need to be squared because of the coefficient of 2. I get 0 0.022. That will go in right here. Now substitute everything in and solve. I took out the per mole on the R value because this value for the standard free energy change is for like one round of the reaction where one mole of carbon monoxide produces one mole of the methanol. This gives me an answer of negative 38,000 joules for one round of this reaction, where one mole of carbon monoxide makes one mole of methanol. Notice how this value for the free energy change is much greater than the standard free energy change, and that's really showing the effect of pressure. Our pressures in this problem were much higher than one atmosphere. That's the standard atmospheric pressure. If you think about Le Chatelier's principle, if we increase the pressure, the system wants to decrease the pressure by shifting in a direction that has fewer moles of gas, and that would be to the right. The further to the right the reaction shifts, the higher the change in the free energy, and that's what we're seeing here with our answer. And although both answers are negative, my free energy change answer that I was looking for is more negative, and that would indicate that the reaction is more spontaneous at the pressures that are greater than one atmosphere. So we just looked at a reaction that ended up being spontaneous.
And you would maybe think that one mole of carbon monoxide and two moles of hydrogen at the pressures that were given in the problem should yield one mole of the methanol, according to the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. And although the methanol has a lower free energy than the reactants, we do not actually get one mole of methanol that is produced. There is an even lower free energy available to the system than the one mole of methanol. Take a look at the diagrams below. Notice in both diagrams, point B is lower than point A, showing spontaneous processes, right? A decrease in free energy. But uh, in the first diagram, this would be something like a spontaneous phase change. A goes to B. This process goes to completion. But in the second diagram, this is like a chemical reaction. The ball never makes it to point B because there is a lower energy point C that is available. The reaction does not go to completion, it goes to equilibrium, and that represents the lowest possible free energy that can be achieved by the system. In section 8, we will look at the relationship between free energy and equilibrium in more detail.